We're going to make a tile pattern, a repeating pattern, sort of like a wallpaper or uh, wrapping paper. Welcome to the art project. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you are new here, please subscribe. And if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, please. So first thing you want to do is practice drawing your image. In this case, I'm doing what I call a flourish. I think it's called a flourish. It's um, decorative. Uh, floral looking uh, they've been kind of fun for me to draw lately but you don't have to do a flourish you could do a pineapple or a hyacinth flower uh, anything like that uh, in this particular case I'm also trying to make it symmetrical so I'm using the graphite transfer method to trace half of my image and then flip it over and repeat it on the other side. This is also not necessary for this repeated tile. It's just what I wanted to do for mine. Uh, once you have it transferred, I then um, went over it with Sharpie Pen. Again, this is just practice, and so what you're looking at right here is not part of my final project. It is just me practicing. You can never really practice enough before you start on the big final project. Once I've gone over everything with Sharpie Pen, I usually take an eraser and erase all the pencil marks so that it's nice and clean. And there it is. Uh, but now let's do the real thing. Uh, so to make this work, I used a six by six inch square. You could use four by four, five by five, uh, whatever. But for my portfolio, I used a six by six square. And then I wanted to make sure that my image was centered uh, right in the middle. I tried to go all the way from the top to the bottom and from the side to the side. You'll notice that I did not actually go all the way side to side in this, but I think going completely side to side is going to be a little bit helpful in the end. This flourish that I'm drawing here does not look exactly like the first flourish that I practiced in my sketchbook. The one in my sketchbook was just practice. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger and different. I have a light board that I use to trace this in my studio, but if you don't have a light board or a light table, you can use a window. After I had it transferred, and it's probably really hard to see in the video, but it's transferred to the other side, I took a Sharpie pen, or an artist pen, in this case a Micron, and I traced it. It's a good idea, if you can, to wait until you've done the next part of the drawing before you go, until you've completely finished your drawing before you go over it with pen. That way, if you decide to, you can make changes to it uh, when you start doing the second image. Now, you're probably wondering what I'm talking about when I say second image. Just keep watching, you'll see. All right, I'm going to cut it in half both ways. Now be careful. Uh, this can get kind of confusing because I'm cutting this in half. Now I'm going to fold this piece in half and cut it in half as well. I'm starting to have puzzle, uh, puzzle pieces, pieces of the puzzle. So be careful you don't get them confused. There's only four, so it shouldn't be that bad. And I place them back together. And now I'm going to swap opposite corners, the top left or the bottom right, bottom right. Uh, bottom left or the top right. Then turn it over. You want to make sure that it stays in the same orientation when you turn it over. And then I'm going to put some tape on uh, each edge to make sure that it stays together. And then I'm going to add some more tape across the middle. All right. Uh, next step is I'm going to draw a second image in the middle. Now, you didn't see me practicing this, but I've drawn skulls for ever and a day. Uh, like to think I'm pretty good at it. 
And so I just jumped right in here and drew a skull. And then I added some more flourishes around behind the skull and overlapping the original flourish. So this is where what I mean by not tracing it in Sharpie pen or my artist pen first. If I wanted to make any changes to that part, I couldn't do it. So uh, maybe save tracing it for artist pen, save tracing it with artist pen until this time. Then go back and clean it up by erasing all of your pencil marks. Now, my math was bad. I said print out 48 and really all you need is 24. And then on top of that, I decided only to do half of my uh, portfolio instead of the entire thing. So I've only needed 12 copies. So you do the math for you for whatever size work of art you're doing. I don't know, maybe you're covering a wall and you need a lot more than this. And then I laid them down side by side to check them for accuracy. Make sure they work. And they work, and that made me super excited. Notice how they all fit up in the middle. Match up in the middle. Uh, for this portfolio, I'm using a 24 by 36 inch piece of tag board folded in half. And now I'm going to use uh, some scrap paper to keep from getting glue on the table and I'm going to put glue all over the back of the tile in order to make sure that it stays glued down and doesn't have any bubbles or wrinkles or anything like that in it and then I'm just going to start gluing them down one right after another now these did not line up perfectly. Uh, it ended up kind of trailing off the top right hand side. Uh, you might see a little gap down there at the very bottom. And there are some little spaces in between. It is not 100% perfect. Uh, you could probably do a better job. You could probably make it perfect. Uh, mine's not and I didn't worry about it. It was good enough. It looked great. Finally, I drew my name, uh, and for this, I did my name in cursive. You can do any kind of block letters you want to, but I decided to do some cursive letters. I thought it would go good with my flourishes. And I took an X-Acto knife and cut it out. You can also use scissors. Don't forget the little holes in the middle of each of the letters. Put down some newspaper so as not to waste any more copy paper to protect my table as I put the glue on it. Now this part gets a little bit tricky and I did this all by myself but if you can find somebody to help you hold the paper the right way you can probably get it straighter and not mess it up. I thought it looked kind of nice uh, at an angle anyway and then there it is. That's my final finished picture. Uh, you can also go back in and paint the tiles. Uh, you can bring some of the flourishes out and, or the, make the skull stand out more. Or if you're doing pineapples, you know, you can paint it in whatever colors you want to do. You can use a uh, color pencil or watercolor maybe. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, now it's your turn. Go make some art.